Hi, Rihanna. Thanks so much for asking this question. I really appreciate it. This is section 5.4, practice question 4. What are we told? We're told that the mass of the first object right here is equal to the mass of the second object, same mass, okay? And we're just going to call that mass m. Now, before the collision, you've got that first object. It has a momentum, so it would be its mass times its velocity, there's a little representation of it with that arrow. It's all in the x direction. Maybe we should write that down. We're going to say this way is x and this way is y. Probably a good idea to do that. And we're told what this speed is. It's 2.25 meters per second. So I can calculate the magnitude of the momentum by just putting in the speed here. Then bingo bango, we have a collision. And after the collision, this is what happens. The first object goes upward at an angle of 31.1 degrees. And the second object, the first object goes downward at an angle of 48.9 degrees. One has to go up and the other one has to go down. They both can't go up and they both can't go down. And the reasoning is, if you look at the momentum before the collision, there's absolutely positively no Y component to this momentum. That means after the collision, there can be no Y momentum. So you've got to have some upward positive Y momentum and then some downward negative Y momentum so that they will cancel out and give you the zero you started with. You can't have both balls going up or, or both balls going down. It, it's not possible. You'd be violating the law of conservation of momentum in the Y component. So how are we going to solve this? Well, we could think about solving this using geometry and trig and stuff like that. So let's write down the beginnings of this. Momentum before the collision is equal to momentum after the collision. There you have it. Well, let's represent momentum before the collision graphically. There I have it, an arrow. And I'm going to say that this arrow represents the momentum mass times 2.25 meters per second, all positive x. The arrow represents the direction. What does that have to equal? Well, it equals the momentum after the collision, which is represented by this arrow mass of the object times velocity 2 after the collision plus the momentum we get from the first object mass of the object velocity of the first object after the collision these two momentums together have to equal the original momentum but when i say you're adding them you're adding them through vector tip to tail addition so let's do that it doesn't matter which way you uh, add them up because 1 plus 2 is 2 plus 1. Whatever order you add them in, you get the same answer. So I'm going to draw the red vector there. So vector tip. So at the tip of the red one, I put the tail of the blue one. Draw it in. And I know that these two added together must equal the original momentum. So I finish off the triangle. What else do I know? Well, they told me this angle was 48.9 degrees. They told me this angle was 31.1 degrees, and by the Z rule, this becomes 31.1 degrees. Then I know the entire triangle needs a total angle of 180. Well, if I got 48.9 in one corner, 31.1 in the other corner, that means phi, this angle right down here, has to be 100. Okay? If you need to pause the video to, you know, review at any time, slow yourself down, let it sink in, do it. Just pause the video. Imagine if you could do that in class. Just push a button and pause me. That'd be kind of cool. So here we go. We're going to use sine law. So we're going to do a sine law with the red side and the green angle black side. So I set up the sine law between those two signs, sides. And the mass cancels. Then I'm going to do sine law between the blue side here and the green angle black side. So I set up sine law for that, and the mass cancels. So I continue. We have magnitude of the velocity first object after the collision prime. I bring this sine 31 up. There we have it. I do some mathematics. 1.18 meters per second is the velocity of the first object after the collision. 
Same thing here, bring the sine 48.9 over here. I do some mathematics here, algebra, uh, excuse me, uh, arithmetic, what have you, and I get 1.72 meters per second right there. So I've solved the question. Okay, I have solved the question. Now there is another way that uh, we can do this, and this has to be an elastic collision, because elastic collisions, uh, Excuse me, this doesn't have to be an elastic collision because elastic collisions would have a uh, conservation of kinetic energy as well as momentum. So that's something we have to revisit later. All we're taking advantage of now is that momentum is conserved. Is it elastic? Is it not elastic? We're going to look at that later. So here I've solved using geometry, triangles, trig. In a moment's time, I'm going to show you how to solve this with the component method. Okay, so we're going to do the component method now. When we use the component method, what we're saying is, is that the x component of the momentum before the collision is equal to the x component of the momentum after the collision. The y component of the momentum before the collision equals the y component of the momentum after the collision. Let's work with x first. And then we will continue with the y. So that's what I do. Mass of the object times the speed it was going at before the collision, x hat, I know that, is equal to mass of uh, object number one times its velocity x component plus mass of the second object times its velocity after the collision x component. All the masses cancel, so I can write out this next line here, okay? Then I only want the x component of this velocity. So the x component of the velocity is found by taking the entire magnitude of the vector and multiplying it by cos of the angle that is associated with it. All right, if you want to look back at the diagram, you can. See? x would be cos here, x would be cos here. y component would be sine y component would be signed. We've done that many times. And I do the same thing with the second object. The velocity of the second object after the collision x component is the magnitude of the second object's component, the second object's velocity after the collision times sine 31.1 degrees x hat. And now when you get to right here, we're stuck. We can't move any further because I have two unknowns, v2 prime, v1 prime. Ah, there's nothing I can do. So let's do, try to do some work in the y component, shall we? All right, here we go to the y component. There is no y momentum before the collision. The object was moving solely in the x direction, zero. And that equals the mass of the object times the velocity of object one after the collision, y component, plus mass of the object times velocity of object 2 after the collision, mv2 prime, y component. This is all y component. Then we break this down and we look at the diagram and we realize that this object was going downward, negative y. So I put a negative in there. I get that from the diagram. So negative magnitude of the velocity times the sine of the angle associated with it. This object was going upward plus sign, okay? So it becomes magnitude of the velocity times the sine of the angle associated with it, and these are both y hats, both all dealing with y. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this term here over to the other side, and I do that here. I bring it over to the other side. Then I isolate for v1 prime because I know I can take v1 prime and substitute it into here. Okay, so this is what I'm doing here. I'm isolating for v1 prime, knowing that I'm going to take this expression and substitute it into the equation that I could no longer move forward with. This came to the rescue. The y component came to the rescue to help finish the x component. And that's what I've done here. I bring this expression here and I replace v1 prime. Gone. See, v1 prime is being replaced by this. I'm keeping it in red to emphasize the point. So I substitute that in. I notice right here that I'm going to cancel out the y hats. They cancel right there, gone. And I'm also now 
before I get to the next step, I'm going to factor out a V2 prime out of here, and I'm going to factor out a V2 prime out of there. So bingo, bango, it's been factored out. So I got these big brackets. The sine 31.1 remains. The cos 48.9 remains. The sine 48.9 remains in the uh, denominator. Okay, and here I'm left with the cos 31.1. Now I've got x hats to be found everywhere. X hats to be found everywhere. So they all cancel out. X hat cancel out on both sides. All right. So what am I left with? Well, I'm left with some math to do. Okay. I, I hope you know from your work in mathematics that sine over cos is equal to tan. Well, if you've got cos over sine, right, instead of having a tan in the numerator, I'd have a tan in the denominator. So I've replaced this. Cos over sine, same angle, leaves me with a tan in the denominator. I hope you learned that in math class. Now I've got to put this into my handy-dandy, fancy-dancy calculator, all right, and do some, you know, supercalifragilisticexpialidocious calculations, and I know you can do that. I know, I know you can do that, and we get 1.31 rounded. 1.31. So, I then do some simple mathematics, bring the 131 underneath here, and I get that V2 prime is the magnitude there of V2 prime is 1.72 meters per second. Okay? Now I can take this value and bring it back to that Y equation that I left a few moments ago. All right? I can bring that back. I look here, the Y hats cancel. Boom, boom. I no longer have a V2 prime magnitude. I replace it with 1.72 meters per second magnitude. I do some fancy dancy math and I get the magnitude of V1 prime. The magnitude of object one's velocity after the collision is 1.18 meters per second. So there you have it. It's been done two different ways. Which way do you like better? I think I know. I think I know. Once again, thank you for asking the question. I love questions. Have a great day. Be safe. Bye-bye.